Introduction The Greeks played imperative role in the history of science, and they are involved in the majority of all the variants that make up the study of science today, be it political sciences, logic, physiology, geometry, geology, astronomy, and the likes. The Greeks are highly speculative and rational. One can also say that the wave of education and information in the field of science radiating across the globe today took its origin from the background efforts of Greek literature. History of science can be simply defined as the study of the various developmental stages of science and all scientific-related knowledge bases, be it social science or natural science. History relating to humanities and arts was not usually classified as part of the history of science in times past, though it was added to the variants of the subjects under science at a later end of the 20th century. They are more or less classified as the history of scholarship. Science talks about the natural world, taking into cognizance the practical, theoretical and empirical aspects of knowledge relating to human systems and practices. These knowledge bases were formulated by various scientists over the centuries who placed emphasis on the prediction, explanation and observation of real-world phenomena to arrive at particular conclusions. History of science differs a little from historiography of science, which is concerned with the various methods via which historians study the history of science. Those involved in the study of science are referred to as scientists, which is a relatively new word, and it was first used in the 19th century by William Wewell. The word natural philosophers refer to those individuals involved in the investigating aspect of nature. History of science is linked to empirical investigations of the natural world, and it had been in force since classic antiquity. The use of various scientific methods began in the Middle Ages with Roger Bacon and Ibn al-Haytham championing the cause. It was not until the early modern period that modern science began to develop. Development of science led to the scientific revolution that nominated the larger part of the 16th and 17th centuries, especially in Europe. History of science as regards the biological and physical sciences was usually presented in a continuous narrative, especially between the 18th and late part of the 20th century. During this period, various false beliefs that had become entrenched over time due to lack of sufficient research, lack of scientific developments and scientific methods were replaced with true theories. One of such false beliefs had to do with the location of the Earth, which was falsely believed to be at the centre of the solar system. Some science historians, however, went a step further by narrating science from the political, economical, cultural and intellectual perspectives which are all outside the general scope of science. The Early Cultures Adopted in History of Science During ancient period, oral tradition word of mouth, formed the major means via which knowledge and advice were passed from one generation to another. For example, South Mexico domesticated maize as far back as 9,000 years ago, and this was long before writing science began. This knowledge was passed down via oral tradition. Astronomical knowledge, too, was developed via archaeological evidence in prehistoric times. At a later time, the writing science was developed and humans could now store up knowledge in written form and this promoted the ease of access to information and rate of communication. Many of the ancient civilizations, like the Egyptian, Chinese and Aegean civilization, collected information about astronomy using a systematic manner via simple observation. They might have been oblivion of knowledge about how the stars and planets look like, but they could propose many theoretical explanations which are found applicable today. Many of the ancient civilizations also practiced alchemy, and some had basic knowledge of human physiology. Also, they performed lots of study on the microscopy of flora and fauna, thereby increasing knowledge base within the limitations foisted on them. Chapter 1. Ancient History of Science History of Science in Ancient Africa Science had its origin in Africa, with ancient Egypt pioneering the development of scientific knowledge and methods in ancient time. 
they made remarkable advances in various fields of science, like medicine, mathematics, and astronomy. Furthermore, they forayed into the field of geometry as an important window into the world of surveying which was necessary for preserving the ownership and layout of their farmlands, since the Nile River consistently threatened to take possession of such farmlands. The architectural edifices that characterize ancient Egypt have their bases on geometry with its foundation on the three to four to five right triangles. Alchemy research also had its origin in Egypt, and the rest of the Mediterranean borrowed a leaf in alchemy from this ancient city. As at today, the Edwin Smith Papyrus, which is the very first medical document ever developed by humans, is still available, and it originated from ancient Egypt. This same document has been put forward in many quarters as the first ever document on neuroscience, which is the aspect of science that studies the brain and its functions. It is that ancient Egypt made several advancements in the field of medicine, and they have the first documented history of medical practice, but it is also on records that many of these practices were sometimes harmful and ineffective. The pharmacological aspect of the medical practice in Egypt was more or less a display of ineffectiveness, according to medical historians. Despite this observed ineffectiveness, the medical practice in Egypt followed certain laid-down procedures in the management of various diseases, and these procedures are still being practiced in present-day medical sciences. These procedures include examination, followed by diagnosis, then treatment, and finally prognosis. Evidence of empiricism can also be traced to the Ebers Papyrus, which dated as far back as 1550 BC. History of Science in Ancient Near East Present-day Iraq formed the center of the Near East civilization. It was then named Sumer. The people of Mesopotamia, including Babylonia, started to carry out investigations, make observations and record some global numerical data around 3500 BC. They were not focused on elucidating scientific laws through their works, but these observations have become part of the major ingredients for formulating present-day scientific knowledge bases. The idea of Pythagoras' theorem started from here, which was a theorem developed around 18th century BC. Several Pythagorean triplets were recorded on the Mesopotamian cuneiform tablet called Plimpton 322, dated as far back as 1900 BC, which was up to millennia before Pythagoras. The Babylonians delved greatly into the world of astronomy. They made several records about the motions of the moon, the planets, and the stars. They recorded their achievements on clay tablets, which were created by their knowledgeable scribes. As of today, Western calendars are partly formulated based on astronomical periods earlier identified by these Mesopotamian proto-scientists. Good examples of these are the lunar month and the solar year, which all have their origins in Mesopotamia. These ancient scientists utilized their astronomical data to develop various arithmetic methods used to accurately predict the movement of the planets and the moon and activities during eclipses of the moon and the sun. They equally used the said data to compute the length of daylight throughout the year. Only very few of those ancient astronomers are known today. One of them is Kidinu from the Chaldean tribe, who is a mathematician and an astronomer. Today's calendars are formulated partly on the discoveries and studies of Kidinu. A historian named A. Aubo once stated that all subsequent varieties of scientific astronomy in the Hellenistic world, in India, in Islam, and in the West, if not indeed all subsequent endeavours in the exact sciences, depend upon Babylonian astronomy in decisive and fundamental ways. He went further by saying, Babylonian astronomy was the first and highly successful attempt at giving a refined mathematical description of astronomical phenomena. History of Science in Ancient Greco-Roman World Natural philosophy played a critical role in the working of the universe. It is involved in the formulation of a regular calendar and possible cure for various diseases. 
one can equally refer to the first sets of scientists in the Greco-Roman world as natural philosophers, as religious followers and as skilled professionals. The pre-Socrates are the earliest philosophers from Greek origin. They concerned themselves with finding answers to how the ordered cosmos in which humans live came into being, which was the major questions on the minds and lips of people of that age. A magnificent example of these pre-Socrates philosophers is Thales, who lived between 640 and 546 BC. He is also dubbed the father of science. Before his time, virtually all natural phenomena were given supernatural explanations. However, he took it upon himself to provide natural and non-supernatural explanations for several of these natural phenomena. People of his time believed that the demigod, Poseidon, was responsible for causing an earthquake. Thales investigated, discovered and declared to the world the scientific basis of an earthquake. The Pythagoras school was formed by Pythagoras of Samos, who was one of Thales' students. Pythagoras of Samos took it on himself to investigate mathematics and he was the very first scientist to hint that the earth is not flat, like many thought in those days, but spherical in shape. The idea of atomism was introduced in the 5th century by Leucippus. This theory states that all matters are made of imperishable, indivisible unit called atoms. His pupils, Epicurus and Democritus, both spent a good portion of their times explaining this theory to the general public. The very first systematic discussion in natural philosophy was produced by both Aristotle and Plato. Later investigations on nature were shaped by the theories propounded by this duo. They formulated the theory of deductive reasoning and it has usefulness and importance in later scientific investigations. In 387 BC, the Platonic Academy was founded by Plato and the motto of the Academy was Let none unversed in geometry enter here. Many notable philosophers were produced by this institution. Empiricism was introduced by Aristotle, who was one of Plato's students. The idea of empiricism is that truths about the universe can be obtained via induction and observation. Several biological writings with empirical backgrounds were produced by Aristotle. In his writings, he focused squarely on the diversity of life and biological causation. Furthermore, he came up with several observations of nature, in particular the attributes and habits of plants and animals. He classified up to 540 species of animals and also carried out dissection on up to 50 of them. Several European and Islamic scholars were influenced profoundly by Aristotle's writing. However, the later scientific revolutions superseded many of his works and findings. In the Greco-Roman period of the history of science, the major focuses were on astronomy, mathematics, geography, mineralogy, botany, zoology and anatomy. They had an awareness of how important scientific problems were and they focused on those problems related to change and its several causes. They equally recognized the methodological importance of mathematical applications of several natural phenomena. Principles formulated by early Greek scientists and philosophers were extensively employed in the works of Hellenistic Age scholars, some of which were empirical researches and applications of mathematics. Medieval Muslim scientists and philosophers also benefited extensively from these findings by the Greek scientists. Besides, the European Enlightenment and Renaissance had a lot to gain from the Greek philosophers, not to talk of the modern-day secular scientists who base many of their recent discoveries on these age-long findings from Greece and Rome. Great advancements were made in the fields of natural science, logic and geometry by these ancient Greek philosophers and scientists. Though their works also had their foundations in discoveries earlier made by scientists in ancient Egypt. History of Science in Ancient India At a later time, the Indians too got involved in scientific developments and their involvement could be traced to a period between the 4th and 3rd millennia BC during what is termed the Indus Valley Civilization. 
they made an attempt to standardize measurement of length and improve its accuracy. They were among the first sets of scientists to develop the ruler and divide it into smaller units. One of the outstanding mathematicians and astronomers during this age was Aripata, who introduced trigonometric functions. Ancient Indian scientists equally ventured into metallurgy and are considered as outstanding leaders in this field of science. The algorithm of algebra was also part of their areas of interest. Additionally, the Hindu-Arabic numeral system originated from this country, a system that has now attained global application. Some of the areas of concentration in ancient India were astronomy, linguistics, medicine and metallurgy. India participated a great deal in the development of medicine, with a very early form of proto-dentistry practice traced to the country. Several progressive and intricate farming cultures have also been discovered via archaeological findings in India. The Iron Age, India is credited with some of the earliest forms of linguistic activities and developments, especially during the first millennium BC. Panini lived between 520 and 460 BC, and he delved into the field of linguistics during his days, formulating up to 4,000 rules of grammatical constructions. History of Science in Ancient China China, too, played vital role in the ancient history of science, with their exceptional achievements in the fields of mathematics, astronomy and seismology. Seismology is an aspect of science that prepares the human race against future calamities using seismometer, an instrument developed in 132 CE by Zhang Heng. This instrument sends alert to the Chinese authority of earthquake occurrences. He called this device an instrument for measuring the seasonal winds and the movements of the earth. Also, the magnetic needle compass used for navigation and detection of the true north was first described by Chinese scientists too. The Chinese also contributed a great deal to the recording of solar and lunar eclipses. They were among the first to use decimal fractions and negative numbers. Many of their mathematical discoveries had their basis on the Pythagoras theorem. Chapter 2 Science History in the Middle Age The Islamic world played a great role in the history of science in the Middle Age. The use of Arabic language and the spread of Islam gave them strong background for scientific exploits, especially during the 7th and 8th centuries, a period termed as Islamic Golden Age, which ended in the 13th century. They only required single language to communicate, hence no need for an interpreter. They had access to ancient Greek texts and Indian findings, which both formed the basis for their scientific developments and advancements. The Greek ventured into experimentation, but not as deeply as the Muslim scientists. Their experiment-rich findings brought about their great discoveries in optics, and Ibn al-Haytham was at the head of most of these discoveries. The concept of the algorithm was further developed by another Muslim mathematics named Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. Al-Batani, a Muslim mathematician who lived between 850 and 929 BC, also contributed immensely to the field of mathematics and astronomy. Modern chemistry development can also be traced to Muslim chemists and alchemists. Many even consider Muslim chemists to be the founders of chemistry. Notable among these chemists is Jabir ibn Hayyan, who is being considered by many as the father of chemistry. Roger Bacon and Isaac Newton were both influenced by the findings of Arabic scientists. The Muslim world had several philosophers, but the most influential of them all was Ibn Sina, who pioneered experimental medicine. He was also the very first physician to conduct clinical trials. His works on medicine, titled The Canon of Medicine and Script of Healing, were used as standard texts in medical practices in Europe and the Muslim world up to the 17th century. He was also the one who discovered that infectious diseases are contagious. Furthermore, he introduced clinical pharmacology to the science world. Abu al-Qazim al-Zarhavi was the pioneer of surgery during the Middle Age. 
Indology, Anthropology and Geodesy, on the other hand, were the focuses of Abu Ran al-Biruni. Several universities, hospitals, observatories and libraries were built by these Muslim scientists during their days before the Mongol conquests, which led to the destruction and end of the Islamic Golden Age. Europe equally played a role in the Middle Age history of science. It all began with the establishment in the 12th century of medieval universities. Scientific development in Middle Age Europe had its foundation on earlier findings by the Greek and Arabic scientists like Aristotle, Averroes, Jabir ibn Hayyan and the likes. Arabic scientific findings were translated into Latin and this opened the floodgate of discoveries to the European scientists. However, the hunger for more information compelled Michael Scottus, a translator, to study Arabic, giving him a stronger understanding of the language and enabling a direct study of Arabic scientific texts for better and broader knowledge. These translated texts were extensively distributed and propagated by European universities. The study of nature and the natural world formed the centre of the curriculum in European universities in the Middle Age. Present-day universities do not lay as much emphasis on science as the Middle Age universities did. Europeans took their venture for scientific knowledge further east and they could gain much insight into Chinese and Indian civilization and culture in the context of European tradition. By the 13th century, many of the Arabic scientific works had been translated into Latin, making it easy to transfer scientific ideas in the monasteries and universities. Let it suffice that majority of European scientific discoveries have their basis on contributions from the Islamic world. The first step towards the modern concept of inertia was developed by a European scientist called Buridan with his findings being based entirely on the works of Aristotle on mechanics. Kinematics of motion was taken over by the Oxford calculators. Later, the printing press was introduced and it had a great impact on the European society. Printing helped to democratise learning, thereby permitting faster propagation of several new ideas which influenced science teaching a great deal in Europe. This period also marked the introduction of algebra. The scientific revolution of this period was unprecedented. How Science Impacted Europe The Black Death marked the end of the earlier scientific developments achieved in Europe in the 12th century. This was followed by the Italian Renaissance, which many considered as a lull in scientific activities. During the Northern Renaissance, knowledge was widened in the fields of medicine, anatomy and botany. This period also coincided with the Protestant Reformation and the Catholic Counter-Reformation. The fall of Constantinople and Christopher Columbus's discovery of America also occurred around this period. A new precedence was set in which scientific doctrines were being questioned around this period, just like religious doctrines were questioned by John Calvin and Martin Luther. The activities of this period cast doubt on several ancient scientific works, including those of Galen on medicine and Ptolemy on astronomy, since they were found inapplicable to day-to-day -day observations in each of these fields of science. Aside from questioning long-held ancient scientific findings and teachings, the European scientists went further to proffer reliable answers and solutions to these controversial scientific ideas, leading to modern advancement in the field of science. The scientific revolution started in 1543 and it was marked by the printing of a script by Andras Vesalium titled De Humani Corporis Fabrica, on the workings of the human body and another script by Nicolaus Copernicus, an astronomer, titled De Revolutinobus. Copernicus was the first entity to propose that the Earth moves around the Sun and not the other way round. Isaac Newton also contributed immensely during this period of scientific revolution with the printing of his work on the philosophical principles of natural science and mathematics in 1687. This era marked the birth of scientific publications across Europe. Other noteworthy scientists also contributed immensely during this period. Some of them are Blaise Pascal, Gottfried Leibniz, 
Johannes Kepler, Tycho Brahe, Christian Huygens, Robert Hooke, Edmund Halley, and Galileo Galilei. Thomas Hopes, René Descartes, and Sir Thomas Brown also had their names registered among outstanding contributors to the field of philosophy. This period saw an improvement in the scientific method and modern way of thinking was infused into the populace via extensive reasoning and experimentations which had upper hand over traditional considerations. Age of Enlightenment The Age of Enlightenment has its origin in Europe around the 17th century. This age marked the advent of decisive actions in modern science. It spread far into the 18th century with various scientists finding themselves in the limelight like Leibniz, Pascal, Descartes and Newton. Modern advancements in the fields of technology, physics and mathematics were made with the likes of Jean Le Ronde, Dan Bart, Mikhail Lomonosov and Benjamin Franklin championing the cause of modern technological and scientific discoveries. Philosophy too was positively affected, same for religion. Society and politics were also not left out in this way of scientific revolution. It is accepted that the scientific revolution age was the foundation of modern-day science. The Romantic movement is worthy of note during the age of scientific enlightenment and revolution. This period was in the early part of the 19th century and it was characterized by new unexpected pursuits in the field of science. The Darwin's theory of evolution came up during this period and several other discoveries were made in the field of biological sciences. Electromagnetism was discovered in physics around this period and non-Euclidean geometry as well as group theory was discovered in mathematics. The Romanticism movement equally brought about the discovery of organic chemistry. However, Romanticism could not last for long with the entrance of Positivism, an entirely new scientific movement. The new movement held sway between 1840 and 1880, transforming old ideas and propounding new ones while it lasted. Chapter 3 Modern Day Science Institutionalization and professionalization of science began in the 19th century and held sway all through the 20th century till date. Its importance was further strengthened by the interest of governments in science development. Governments were later involved in the building and funding of universities and other institutions of learning, leading to further propagation of scientific knowledge in the society. Many aspects of governmental functions were incorporated into science development. Science development in the modern age has touched the two main classes of sciences, which are first, natural science, second, social science. Natural science Various fields in natural sciences got improved tremendously during the modern age and the discoveries of the early 20th centuries from the basis for present-day science studies. In physics, for example, the contributions of Albert Einstein and James Clerk Maxwell cannot be overemphasized. It must be noted, however, that a good chunk of modern-day scientific discoveries have their basis and origin in ancient-day scientific discoveries of the Arabian and Greek scientists and philosophers. In the modern age period, heliocentric model of the solar system was revived by Nicolaus Copernicus from the ancient works of Aristarchus of Samos. It was followed by the elliptical orbits work of Johannes Kepler in the early part of 17th century. Galileo Galilei went further by experimentally validating several physics theories, an engagement that earned him the title of Father of Modern Physics. William Gilbert came up with the idea that the Earth is a magnet and he delved further to develop the science of magnetism and electricity. Newton's law of motion, as described by Isaac Newton in 1687, led to the modern-day development of standard mechanism. Newton's law of gravitation also formed the basis for the current fundamental force of gravity. Faraday, in the 19th century, worked extensively on electricity and magnetism. James Clerk Maxwell took it further during the earliest period of modern science age by unifying the two to form electromagnetism. 
Aside from using ancient discoveries as a basis for present-day scientific studies, modern-day scientists also picked loopholes and several faults in many of these ancient theories. Newton's laws and theories might have held sway for decades, but they were found to be faulty on many fronts by Niels Bohr, Albert Einstein and Max Planck beginning from 1900. They could pick out these faults via quantum theories, which explained many of the anomalies of the ancient scientific theories. Einstein proposed the theory of general relativity in 1915, which further questioned many of the ancient scientific discoveries, especially the works of Isaac Newton. Some of the modern-day scientific discoveries that had transformed the face of science are highlighted below. First, Einstein, in 1915, propounded the theory of general relativity. Second, Werner Heisenberg and Erwin Schrödinger in 1925 formulated quantum mechanism. Third, Edwin Hubble in 1929 worked on the expansion of the universe and formed the basis for the Big Bang theorem proposed by Georges Lemaitre. Fourth, Otto Hahn and Fritz Schassmann in 1938 discovered nuclear fission. Fifth, Lise Meitner and Otto Robert Frisch in 1939 started the theoretical interpretation of the fission process and it was later improved on by Niels Bohr and John A. Wheeler. Sixth, atomic bomb and discovery of radar came up during the World War II. Seventh, Antoine Lavoisier, father of modern chemistry, worked on law of conservation of mass. Eighth, Periodic table was formulated based on John Dalton's works of 1803. Ninth, Friedrich Waller opened the door to organic chemistry. Tenth, Francis Crick's made discoveries about the structure of DNA. Eleventh, Miller Urey experiment led to the discovery of amino acid structure. Twelfth, Jean Etienne and Nicolas Desmarais drew the first set of Earth maps. Thirteenth, James Hutton, George Cuvier and Alexander Brognard developed a system for rock classification and fossil dating. The law of evolution by natural selection equally took centre stage during the modern days of science. Heredity, too, was extensively studied and it is still being studied by scientists from all spheres. The works of George Mendel, who was a monk, formed the basis for this line of study. Mendel's works led to the extensive studies of genetics and genetic mapping, which started in 1990 and aimed at mapping the entire human genome, a project called Human Genome Project. This led to the discovery of the basic structure of DNA by Maurice Wilkins, Francis Cricks and James D. Watson in 1953. Genetic engineering came up for discussion in the later part of the 20th century. The works Gaia formulated in the 1960s, the Gaia hypothesis represents a meeting point between environmentalism and ecosystem ecology. Social Sciences Various fields of social sciences have also been improved over the years, be it political sciences, linguistics, economics, psychology, sociology and anthropology. Anthropology for one originated from the earlier discussed age of enlightenment in Europe. It involves the study of human behaviour in a systematic manner. Anthropology has its origin in sociology, philology, history and jurisprudence. Many of the ancient theories in anthropology were re-evaluated and research ethics were formulated for a better organisation in the field. The earliest known systematic sociologist is Ibn Khaldun. The likes of Talcott Parsons dominated the sociological space in America between the 1940s and 1950s. The philosophies of Karl Marx formed the basis, or the conflict theory, which opposed the works of Parsons. Varieties of new theories have come up in this field, like the postmodernism theory, rational choice theory, post structuralism, and feminist theory. In psychology, in the 20th century, the Freud's theory was put down for being too unscientific. But John B. Watson formulated the behaviorism theory, which many applauded. 
New disciplines have come up in psychology in the modern age, bringing about the integration of neurobiology, philosophy, computer sciences and linguistics. The integration led to the development of CAT scans and PET scans for proper assessment of human brain as a window to human behaviour. The field of economics has witnessed lots of promulgations regarding macroeconomics and microeconomics, with John Maynard Keynes being right at the centre of it all in the 1920s. One other theory that surfaced in the 1970s was monetarism, which focused on using the demand and supply of money to control economic activities. Series of new economic theories of the present day include new Keynesian economics and new classical economics. Emerging Disciplines Some of the emerging disciplines of science are telecommunications, public relations, marketing, information theory, animal communication and various forms of communication. Electrical engineering, discrete mathematics and theoretical linguistics form the basis for computer sciences. These fields study in details the limits and nature of computation. Some of the subfields of computer sciences are computer hardware, artificial intelligence, computer networking, database design, computational complexity and computability. Scientists place great emphasis on archiving of scientific data and this had contributed immensely to human studies in virtually every field. Environmental science, on the other hand, incorporates physics, mathematics, geography, ecology, earth sciences, chemistry and biology, making it an interdisciplinary field. Crystallography, mineralogy and metallurgy form the basis for the new field of science called the material science. In this new field, composite materials, semiconductors, plastics, glass, ceramics and metals are studied in details. Conclusion History of science has come a very long way. As it had been extensively described in this write-up, science is as old as the human race. Whether known or oblivious, man is an embodiment of science, same for his environment. It had also been emphasised in this write-up that virtually every continent on Earth, at one point or the other, contributed its quota immensely to the discovery and development of various aspects of science. The reader would also have learned that the study of science and the first set of philosophers and scientists were all found in Egypt, making Africa the undoubted origin of the study of science. Many of the ancient scientists and their discoveries might have been faulted in the modern scientific world, but many of the current scientific discoveries have their origins on the seemingly imperfect promulgations of those ancient scientists from Africa, Arabia, India, China, Greece and Rome. Humans have made many discoveries in the field of science, as described in this write-up. Be that as it may, the journey is still far. Many discoveries are yet to be made and several errors, many of the older discoveries are pitted with still need to be corrected. For one, in the field of physics, Inconsistencies have been discovered between quantum mechanism and general relativity and present-day scientists have a duty to unify these two and create a common ground between these fundamental theories representing some of the discoveries in the field of science.